what do we know about the moon's history? So here's the first thing we know. It's a little younger than the Earth. But not by much. Okay, it is heavily cratered. There's lots of craters on it. Especially the other side of the moon. Mmm, we'll get there. Yes, not, yes, the dark side if you're a Pink Floyd fan. <laughs> It's, it's not actually a dark sun. But. Okay, um, so it's heavily cratered, especially the other side of the moon. Um, there is evidence of volcanism, which is a fancy word for there's evidence that there used to be magma and volcano activity. Okay, there are uh, dark areas called Maria. Um, Maria, by the way, is Latin for sea because we thought for a long time that there were oceans on the moon. Which, when we go there for real, maybe we'll find out. <laughs> oh, it's not I forgot about that, yeah. Uh pass out the, 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 the It's mostly but not entirely the same composition as the earth. I mean like the same atoms and materials and elements. Yeah, right. This is the giant green tree. Yes, left out in space. <laughs> Mostly, but not entirely the same composition as the Earth. All right. Did I get all the, I get all the high points? I think so. Um, so, little young of the earth, heavily cratered, evidence of past volcanism. Oh, I knew there was one I was missing. Um, the last thing I mentioned is it's, um, uh, so, the same side of the moon always faces the earth. Yep. You have only ever seen in your entire life half of the moon. You have never seen the other half unless you've looked at pictures or were on the Apollo missions, which you weren't. So you don't know what the other side of the moon looks like. So I'm going to show you because it's kind of cool. I mean, it's kind of cool. It's not super cool, but it's kind of cool. Um, here is what the side of the moon looks like that you're used to seeing. This is the side you've always seen. This is what the moon looks like when you look out at it. Um, here's those darker spots, those Mario we talked about. Okay, you can see some cratering, but there's not a ton of craters. You can see some of the little spots. That's the side of the moon you're used to seeing. However, that is not the only side of the moon. Off with. Am I recording? Yay! Okay, let's start with um, four theories. The first one, I'm going to go in um, order of least likely to most likely. Okay? So the least likely theory is one that's called capture theory. Aliens. <laughs> yeah. So this is going to shock you. Aliens are not any of these four options. Uh, I know. Well, there needs to be five theories now. <laughs> that's right. So capture theory. Capture theory is very simple. Basically, uh, moon is a rogue planet slash asteroid 
Yep, that got caught in Earth's gravity. Well, at the time, it would have been a planet. And for each of these, I'm also going to give you an explanation of why it's not, like what the issues with it might be. Because all these have issues. Um, Ashray that got caught in Earth's gravity. So the issue with this is that, um, so math indicates it's unlikely. Good question. Um, they do, so they can figure out what angle and how fast would the moon have had to be traveling to actually get caught in Earth's gravity. In other words, how fast does it have to go and how close does it have to come to Earth in order for it to not go around the sun anymore but start going around the Earth instead. The thing is, the moon is very, very, very large. And um, therefore... Because Earth's gravity is not very large compared to the moon's gravity. So the acceleration of gravity on the moon is about one-sixth, what is, about one-eighth what it is here on Earth. That's not that big of a difference between the Earth and the moon. Um, so it's not very likely that an object this large would get caught by Earth's gravity. However, it should be noted that we do see capture theory actually happen. Mars's moons are capture theory. Mars's moons are just asteroids that get caught in Mars's gravity. Okay, so capture theory, while it's not likely for our moon, it does actually happen in the solar system. So that's that one makes sense from like a logical perspective. It doesn't make sense um, from like a mathematical perspective when you look at that one. Okay, the next one. Um, on the likelihood scale is uh, what's called sister theory. And this is one that the moon formed at the same time as the Earth. So they formed next to each other. Now, there's some... Um, there's some precedent for this. Now that we can locate uh, extraterrestrial planets, so exoplanets are called, now that we can locate planets in other solar systems, we find that there are many planets that orbit each other, that there's binary planets, a planet orbiting another planet as they both go around their star. So that's actually something we see. However, it doesn't seem particularly likely that that's what happened with the moon and the Earth. And the reason for that is... Um, so they have different, um, as I mentioned, they have different compositions. If they formed at the same time, they should have the same compositions. And the age difference, the fact that the moon is a little bit younger, if it formed at the same time, it probably shouldn't be a different age. It should probably be the same age as the Earth. So that's the next one. That one also... Um, maybe a little bit more likely, but not still not a particularly likely theory. Um, the next one has a lot of believers, and this is called daughter theory, or fission theory, but daughter sounds better. I, we're kind of going with the family thing. Capture? Yeah. I, I, wait, you don't do that with your family? I mean, that's how I got my wife. I just I gotta go. went out and caught her. <laughs> yeah. Hey, you you were without, without a cotter. No, no, no. All right, so, daughter theory. Daughter theory is that the moon broke off the earth. So, the theory is that the moon broke off of the earth. There's actually a place in the Gulf of Mexico that's about the size-ish of what we might think the moon might be. And it's a very, 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 very deep crater. He's so broke, and so, what? He's so broke. <laughs> <laughs> He's so broke All right, who needs the E, honestly, really? <laughs> so it broke off the earth. Why would it just it broke off the word broke? Yeah, so the problem with this theory is uh, how? <laughs> like, what would have happened to make it come off? Like, what? Like it didn't, it couldn't just magically happen. Like I, maybe there is 
Um, some ideas are like maybe there was such a large volcanic activity that it like launched it off. Maybe the Earth used to be spinning faster and then the moon came off of it and then that caused them to both slow down. All of that sounds a little unlikely, but it is possible, I suppose. Um, another issue, this does kind of, um, the, the composition issue is a little bit of a problem again. Because we would expect the compositions to be closer to being the same if, um, if they just split off. Which brings us to the fourth theory and the one that is most likely, which is called... Mother theory. Uh, not mother theory. Um, no, it's called impact theory. Not divorce. Not divorce. No. I, your family is impacted by the theory of the moon's creation. Um, impact theory. Basically, a Mars-sized planet collided with Earth. Yeah. So, Mars-sized planet collided with Earth. When those two hit each other, it would have completely shattered the Mars-sized planet. It would have largely broke the Earth, the original Earth-sized planet, and they would have reformed around each other. That would explain why the ages might be different, because they wouldn't have formed at the exact same time. And this would have happened early in Earth's formation, and so the new moon that's formed would be younger, because it would have resulted of the explosion from... Um, the massive collision that you would have had. So let me show you what we think this might look like. Now, I'm going to warn you, it is incredibly overdramatic. 